You're on Ubuntu Radio, South Africa's public diplomacy in action. We continue um, with the uh, program of the diplomat, but we talk uh, quite an important issues, right? We start like this because um, the year 2018 is one of South Africa's busiest in diplomatic calendar since uh, democratization in 1994. South Africa finds itself chairing BRICS, um, also um, in the uh, South African, uh, Southern African Development Community, also finding itself in the Indian Ocean Rim Association as well, and it has recently put through its bid for the non-permanent seat uh, in the UN Security Council as well, 2019-2020. As you may be aware, South Africa obviously is sharing BRICS summit um, until 31st December this year. The 10th summit will be chaired by President uh, Sir Ramaphosa at the Centen Convention Center. And um, the theme is uh, BRICS in Africa, collaborating for inclusive uh, growth and uh, shared uh, prosperity in the fourth uh, industri uh, industrial revolution. Well, recently there's been a number of activities organized and led by South Africa as chair. For example, the uh, Deputy Director General uh, for Asia and Middle East uh, here at the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, Ambassador um, Professor um, Sukla, delivered a lecture at the University of Limpopo recently. And this event preceded the BRICS SHEPA meeting, which took place uh, in Bilavila. And uh, the BRICS SHEPA, Professor Anil Sukla, is here with us in the studio. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure coming to Radio Ubuntu. Yeah. Take us through, just give us a feedback in terms of the uh, BRICS SHEPA meeting, but also mm -hmm. the, the engagement with the University of uh, Limpopo. Well, let me say firstly that BRICS is an intergovernmental forum, but it's not only about government. We would like to have a people-centered BRICS, and therefore the engagement at the University of Limpopo is in keeping with uh, South Africa's vision that BRICS must be all-encompassing, that government is accountable to the people. We need to explain to our people why we are part of the BRICS family, and they need to understand what is happening during our presidency, during the course of 2018. So as much as we are busy with the various uh, work streams meeting that are taking place, the SHEPA meetings, the expert working group meetings, the various ministerial tracks, and ultimately the summit in July, we also need to connect with our people and keep them informed as to why BRICS is of value to South Africa. So the lecture at the University of Limpopo was meant precisely for that, to give feedback to the community, to engage with them, to listen to their views and their concerns around uh, BRICS, as well as to give them an opportunity to interact with us. We were privileged that at the University of Limpopo, uh, the lecture took place on the eve of the second Brick Sherpa meeting, so we had invited <coughs> Sherpas that had arrived in the country on, on the morning uh, to accompany me. So we had the Su Sherpa of India, the Su Sherpa of Brazil, and the Su Sherpa of Russia, who also spoke uh, on that platform. So it was not just the view of South Africa, but also for BRIC partners, and an opportunity for the student community at the university to hear firsthand from the other BRICS countries, their views on BRICS, and also provided an opportunity for them to engage with all of us. Uh, I think the response was fantastic. We had a very good turnout. And it was, a, apart from the inputs by the various uh, Sushapas and myself, we had a very interesting interactive session, uh, which I think was the most valuable uh, for us as, as government representatives to listen to the types of questions that were articulated from the floor, as well as some of the comments and, and uh, views expressed uh, by a very dynamic student community at the University of Limpopo. Take me through the approach of South Africa as chair. What are some of the activities that uh, South Africa is uh, going to put as, uh, as chair of uh, BRICS? Well, this is the second opportunity <coughs> South Africa has of chairing BRICS. <coughs> Excuse me. We were the chair for the first uh, time in 2013 when we hosted the summit in Et Itaquini. So this is the second time around. So it's very important there's continuity in terms of, of uh, what we put on the BRICS agenda and that we carry through all of the initiatives. You will recall that 
2013 was a critical summit for South Africa and for BRICS because some of the <coughs> most important institutional mechanisms uh, that we now have within BRICS were initiated during our chairship. For example, the on the finance track, the decision to create the BRICS New Development Bank, that decision was taken at the Durban Summit and that was one of our key outcomes that we had envisaged for, for our chairship. Secondly, creating the BRICS Business Council. We put that on the table and it was officially accepted and launched at the 2013 Summit. Thirdly, creating the BRICS Think Tank Council. That was another initiative of South Africa that was endorsed and formally launched. And fourthly, the, for the first time, BRICS had an outreach program with countries that are not part of the BRICS family but from the Global South. And in this instance, we were very keen that since it was the first time that the BRICS summit was coming to the African continent here in South Africa, it should have an African focus. So we started an outreach whereby we invited African leadership to dialogue with the BRICS leaders and to find ways in which we could work together in addressing Africa's development trajectory. Mm. Now building on that, we again have an Africa focus. And that is echoed in the theme that has been endorsed by Cabinet for the summit, namely BRICS in Africa, collaboration for inclusive growth and shared prosperity in the fourth industrial revolution. So you can see the theme is uh, quite heavily loaded and it speaks to what we'd like to achieve during our presidency this year. We have chosen appropriately uh, focus on the fourth industrial revolution. As you know, we live in a world today that is dominated by the advent of new technologies, things like robotics, artificial intelligence, big data, and so forth, that now poses new challenges to the global community. But more than challenges, it also provides tremendous opportunities for us. So the idea was to see how the new technologies in this fourth industrial revolution can work for the benefit of our people. And all of the BRICS countries are grappling with these new dynamics. Some are more advanced in, in uh, harnessing the opportunities and addressing the challenge than others. And we thought collectively we need to create a platform where we can reflect on what does this mean for us uh, practically and how can we share best practice, best experience, technology, innovation, get our scientists and our scholars, our students together to look seriously at what is happening in the space of the fourth industrial revolution. F we set for ourselves some key priorities during our presidency. We have put forward the idea to create a working group on peacekeeping. Now many would ask why focus on peacekeeping. Of course, if you look at the African continent, <coughs> peacekeeping is critical in creating a stable, secure and prosperous Africa. Mm. And given that the UN peacekeeping <coughs> uh, contribution on the African continent is critical and all of the BRICS countries, South Africa included, are major peace uh, troop contributing countries to peacekeeping on the African continent. So we thought also the new developments that have taken place in Britain's recent time within the UN system where the budget of the UN Office on Peacekeeping has been dramatically cut because of some countries pulling back on, on commitments. Uh, it's important for us to see what we can do as a collective mm. uh, given our, our respective experiences. And therefore, this proposal was welcomed and we are now agreed that we'll call an experts meeting to see how we can collaborate more closely in terms of uh, adding value to our individual contributions, but to see collectively what we can do, not just on the African continent, but in terms of, of ensuring that we have a coordinated approach to peacekeeping as BRICS. Our second priority is to launch a forum for women and gender. Now, we haven't had a forum where our women could come together and deliberate on issues of common interest, of issues of common concern, 
and opportunities and compare notes in terms of how do we mainstream and fast track issues around women and gender. So this has been welcomed by all of the BRICS partners and we circulated a concept note that was forthcoming from the Ministry of, of Women Affairs and uh, we're making progress in launching this platform which will be a very important platform. Uh, but also linked to this is another proposal is pertaining to women in business, creating a women's business alliance. We have the BRICS Business Council, but there was a feeling amongst all countries that we need to give space where women can deliberate on business and women in business can add value to the economic outlook of the collaboration between uh, BRICS countries. So they have decided that they would like to launch this platform, which we all of us are supporting, and it will be launched where you'll have this unique platform that will be dedicated to also ensuring that we have an inclusive approach with regard to business collaboration and cooperation and opportunities mm -hmm. for our women and especially young uh, women business interpreters. So it's a very important initiative as well. Uh, another very important uh, initiative that we have put on the table is the creation of a vaccine research center. Given the relevance of health to the African continent, uh, the many outbreaks of uh, viruses and pandemics on the African continent, and we were found to be wanting and had to rely heavily on the international community to assist us, the Ebola outbreaks, uh, as an example, mm. uh, in recent times. There was a feeling that all of the BRICS countries have strong uh, capability in this area, but how can we collectively ensure that this works for the benefit of not just the BRICS countries, but especially the countries of the South and the developing world as a whole, and for us specifically for the African continent. So this idea was readily endorsed by all of the BRICS countries. Cabinet has now approved the creation of a working group uh, that will lead this process uh, domestically where it will be the Department of Health, Science and Technology and Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries because there was a view that when we speak of vaccines it should not just be vaccines vis-a-vis -vis humans but also uh, animals given the importance of, of uh, agriculture yeah. in, in our community. So that's the third priority and of course I've spoken to the fourth priority that pertains to the fourth industrial revolution. In addition, also, we would like to activate the Working Group on Tourism. BRICS countries have signed a cooperation uh, MOU on, on tourism collaboration. Tourism is one of those low-hanging fruits, has mm. the potential to address issues of job creation uh, and so forth and help to grow our economies. So we see the value of that and during our presidency, we would like to fast track uh, implementation of the MOU on tourism. So these were some of the key uh, issues that we have put on the table that has been endorsed by our partners and we have made good progress uh, during the first and second SHEPA meeting mm. in uh, activating all of these initiatives. I'm sure this question will come in December 31st when South Africa relinquishes its chairship. But I want to ask it right now in terms of how are you going to ensure that all these uh, tracks are measured and there's a proper monitoring system in place because you do have the uh, council, you do have the business council, you do have the youth forum in terms of how you're going to monitor that. Well, South Africa mooted the idea already last year that we need to put in place a mechanism mm that looks at monitoring and evaluation or as some like to refer to it impact assessment. Uh, and this also has been put on the table uh, by South Africa. But also we also were instrumental in initiating a practice during our presidency in 2013 where for the first time at the end of our presidency we prepared a handover report to the next chair uh, which was Brazil in the case of 2014. At the end of 2013, we presented a comprehensive handover report to Brazil, which outlined all of the meetings that took place, the mm. decisions, and the uh, 
level of implementation in these various work streams and issues that need to, to be followed up by the incoming chair. Now this practice has been continued. Subsequently, mm -hmm. every country has done that. So at the end of our tenure, when we have the last Shepa meeting in December, I will present to Brazil as the incoming chair a comprehensive handover report which outlines the status of implementation of the high-level decisions as well as the continuity that needs to be taken over in the various work streams by the Brazilian presidency. Uh, so in addition to the handover report, we are also looking at putting in place a, a impact assessment mechanism. Uh, continuity and implementation are critical for the BRICS community. For, for those who are joining me, I'm in conversation uh, with uh, the uh, BRICS chair, uh, Professor um, Anelso Cloud, the DDG for Asia Middle East here at the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, um, really looking at uh, um, continually monitoring South Africa's activities as chair of uh, BRICS uh, this year. Now, um, as we draw close to our, co to our conversation, because this is the conversation we're going to have um, throughout the year, um, in terms of, th there's quite a lot of tracks. I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, question that will, will arise in terms of the synergy between the business council, the ministerial council. There's an academic forum. There's also an upcoming uh, youth forum that is going to yes. take place as yes. well. And one is thinking that there's a lot. H how are we making sure that there's that synergy? Yes. Well, the BRICS secretariat is tasked with coordinating and monitoring that all of the work work streams are on track. For example, next week we have two important uh, ministerial work streams taking place. The environmental ministerial work stream, uh, Minister Montlewa is hosting that uh, in Durban, and the energy work stream uh, that is being hosted by Minister Hadebe in, in Cape Town. Uh, so it gives you some idea of the high pace of activities around the BRICS presidency mm -hmm. and, and our involvement as DIRCO in all of these. Uh, also our minister next Wednesday will have uh, a major public diplomacy launch campaign in terms of South Africa's chairship and the way forward. So you can see in any given week there's a number of high level. We also have a public uh, uh, diplomacy uh, outreach program at the University of Western Cape uh, mm -hmm. next Monday. So almost every day there is some high-level activity. Yes, you're correct. Uh, all of the important work streams, including what we refer to as Track 2 and Track 3. Track 1 is def referred to as the intergovernmental stream. Track 2 covers our academia, uh, think tanks, and the business council, and Track 3 organized labor, mm. civil society meetings, all of that. I had a meeting with the representatives of civil society this past Monday. I got an update on, on progress in terms of their meeting. Uh, we have a meeting later today also uh, to look at the meeting of BRICS political parties. So on a daily basis, we are working with different work stream. We are monitoring and tracking and assisting as, as we can as DIRCO to coordinate. Uh, with all of these work streams. Uh, in total, we will host uh, just over 100 meetings during the course of our presidency. Mm. So it's a very high level of action and activities, but more important, it must have some practical outcomes, some substantive outcomes that speaks directly to our national interests, that speak to our domestic priorities. So there must be this continual linkage and complementarity of what we are doing between ourselves as the five uh, states involved in BRICS, but also what we are doing as it speaks to our domestic uh, interests.